Hello, today we're going to talk about mail merges. Now this is going to be an introduction to the subject and as such I'm doing a relatively simple mail merge but if you're not familiar with what they are this is a great place to start. So I want to familiarize you with the files I'm going to be using first. So I've got three files in here. I'm only going to be using two of them. Notice I've got this form letter which is what I'm looking at. It's a Word document. I've got this spreadsheet and I've got this access database. Now this spreadsheet is full of addresses as is this access database. Now there's a good chance you don't have access and so you can use that file but you would never want to open it if you don't even have the software to open it. I'll show you what's in RenInfo. So this is just a spreadsheet full of first names, last names, address, city, state, zip, and, and some other information. Some of it we're going to use, some of it we won't. But there's this idea that if you're doing a mail merge it's to save you time and you're always going to be starting from some pre-populated list of names, addresses, and whatever relevant information there may be. So in this form letter, which I'm going to put it together, so I want to write a form letter that's automatically going to populate a few fields. One of those fields I'm calling an address block. One's first name and one's last name. First name and last name were very clearly in that spreadsheet, which I'm going to use. Address block is a different sort. Address block is just uh, one way to probably describe it would be um, if you were writing a letter, that part where you were sending it to, so a first name, a last name, an address, a city, street, you know, all that kind of stuff. You'll see what it is shortly. So if I want to do a mail merge, sorry for the minute and a half build up, like I said, this is introductory. I'm going to head over to the mailing tab and I head to start mail merge. Now I need to make a decision about what I'm sending here. Emails are perfectly reasonable, so are envelopes and labels. This is a form letter, so I'm going to click letters and nothing. There's a lot of that that's going to happen today. And so then the most important part is probably this next part. So I'm going to be doing letters, nothing happened. So where is that information going to come from? It's going to come from that Excel spreadsheet that I showed you. So I'm going to say use an existing list. Oh, this is annoying. It always pops you back to the uh, same place. And then you got to go find your files. Sorry. Um, Sorry, I had to navigate to the files. So I'm going to do reninfo because reninfo has the recipients of this form letter in it. Notice I do not need to open that up for anything. I'm just pointing word to it. And it's guessing about where the data is. It's correct. And nothing. But I'm telling you, at this point, the heavy lifting is done. And so a theme here is I work from left to right with no exception. Uh, edit recipient list, that's... This would be where I would go if I did not want to send one to a certain person. Like if I didn't want to send a letter to Gary Kubiak, then I wouldn't. But I do, so I will. So I didn't do anything. I worked my way across, and the first thing I run into is an address block. Now notice that's what I called this thing right here. So I'm going to select that thing, and I'm going to replace it with an address block. I click on address block. Address block's kind of a weird little screen. It's just showing you different formats for the user's name. Notice that you can kind of see what's happening over here in the in the preview. I'm just going to stick with the default, which I do almost every time. And now I get this weird thing that says address block. But notice it has the arrows around it. That's the one I want. This thing needs to go. That is just a placeholder. That was just indicating the location. Now that's the strange thing about this process is you don't know if you're doing anything right. Now I'm going to go to F name. I also want to replace that field. And so that's not an address block, that is an insert merge field. So any specific piece of information is going to be in there. There's first name. I'm going to need to press space because I accidentally got rid of it. And I want to replace L name with whatever last name is in that Excel spreadsheet. Believe it or not, I'm done. This, the strangest thing about this process is that this is correct. It's just nothing actually happens until you click preview results. When I click preview results, voila. Right, like first, like first name is substituted in, so is last name, and this is what an address block looks like. And so notice what I mean by that's the part that you would put on a letter, and the to or the from part of it. And so I'm looking at Gary Kubiak's letter, but if you can navigate around the different letters like this, right, and so you can see I just did four letters, and that only took a couple minutes. It took me four minutes because I'm talking a lot. But you can navigate around, you can see that I just did four letters. And you might be thinking, well, I don't know if that was worth it just to put in a couple lines of text. But it's not unreasonable to have a very to have a great amount of substitution happening in your letter. I'm just trying to keep this simple, believe it or not. And so at this point you are free to print them out. But oftentimes the last step of a mail merge is to finish it. So as it stands, like each one of these letters represents a separate document, which makes sense. 
Um, but oftentimes you might want to do this finish and merge step over here. Notice everything is left to right. If I go edit individual documents, I'm just going to go all and I'll show you what that does. I click OK. It creates this new thing called letters to so this temporary little document and I would like to point out that page one is to Carl, page two is to Lucy, page three is to Tim, and page four is to Gary. So all of those letters get merged into one big file and what this is good for is printing. Right now if I press control P or print however I want to print, all my form letters are going to be printed off. Now I only have four letters which is a small amount of letters but Oftentimes, if you're doing a mail merge, you might be printing off a couple hundred letters, and you might be substituting in a lot more information than I'm substituting. So you may never use a mail merge in your real life, but this is one of those things that if you are ever going to be sending out any kind of a bulk communication, this is going to save you a ton of time. And I also want to point out this email merge. This is almost the same as letters, but this is emails. And maybe you don't send a lot of letters, but you might send a lot of emails, and this allows you to put in those those uh, customized touches make it seem like it's a real letter to a real person rather than just to everybody. So I actually went a bit more in depth than I intended to, uh, but this is that's mail merge. And so you pick what you want to do, who are my recipients, and then from there it's just substituting in the fields that you want to substitute in. Thanks for watching.